focus, people, focus. So what, what are we talking about today? Are well, we doing the, uh, the thing we talked about doing? I think we're going to do the thing we talked about doing. I got as long as you remember today. what that is. I don't know. No. So welcome, everyone. Welcome, Matthew. Welcome. Hey, welcome. nice to see you. Hey, good to be seen. <laughs> so we had talked previously. <laughs> that wasn't even the thing. <laughs> I know. I'm sorry. Oh, man. Wow. Good morning. It's another... Or afternoon for you, almost. Yeah, good day. Good day. Hello. Good Hola. Talk. Hola. Bonjour. Bonjour. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Just... <laughs> oh, we we're, we're terrible at starting things and we're terrible at ending okay. things. The That's... middle part is great. Story of my life. Let's just start at the beginning. Or I mean, start start at the middle. So discovery projects are great. <laughs> <laughs> So we were going to talk today a little bit about discovery projects, eh? Yes. That's one of my favorite things to do. That, that, actually, that, was... that came out a little sarcastic, but it actually really is <laughs> my favorite things to do. Don't, don't be sarcastic. Oh. That's how we make our money. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, it's I'm, honestly, for almost all of my clients and even, you know, looking in the past, some of my in, internal as an employee projects, the ones where we've done discovery work first like to figure out what are we trying to do have always led to the most success with the clients uh, why do you think that is project <laughs> well i mean the short answer is and and i i try not to s say this too sardonically but everybody these days and i'm saying painting with a broad brush here just to make the point everyone is uh rushing to ship it you know mm -hmm. and, and no one seems to be asking the question what are we building who are right. we building this for? Uh, do they even want this? You know, doing a, a discovery, you know, if it's if it's standalone that leads to a go, no go, or if it's, you know, we're just going to do this and we're going to proceed based on whatever we find. It just is a moment to really refine what it is you're trying to accomplish. Yeah. Or define. So I'm, I'm, I'm thinking back to when you and I were working together actually as employees, which is hard to remember, it seems like ages ago, but it wasn't ages right. ago, <laughs> where we had kind of this epiphany with the discovery projects where we really tried to formalize it. Mm -hmm. And I think you know the project we're talking about. I know exactly what you're talking about. Oh, I think you know the project I'm talking about. <laughs> I think this, yeah. is, this, is, this is the project, yeah. Yeah, this is the project that, that led to me being very proud of uh, shutting down a business. Yeah, uh, and it was later, later realizing people don't like to talk in those terms. <laughs> right. It it it's sort of a positive message, but yet negative. Um, I I mean, I still think it's a very positive. You, I you do. Get a, we saved a, a client you know, like that. We saved a client a lot of money. So just to tell the story a little bit here, the the, the client came to us to our not our business, but the business we were working with, with a request, and it had it had been an existing client. We had done work with them previously, so we had a little some credibility. And uh, he had a new, I don't say a whole business idea, but it was kind of a new business idea. It was a branch of an existing business, mm -hmm. an offshoot, if you will. And I think you will. I will. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I will. And I it will. Was, on paper, it seemed like a great idea. He was super excited about it. He was ready to invest a million bucks, like a lot of money. Yeah, he came, he came with an initial budget of a quarter million. Okay. And uh, the ask was, I need you to build me an app it was basically to to run all the business processing stuff, taking right. people's orders, managing inventory, things like that. Again, being an existing client, we had a great relationship and we liked business. We liked work. We liked building things. We were more of a development focused shop at the time, less on research and, and uh, yeah. UX things. But through conversation and our own internal toiling, we said, let's wait and Think, let's think about this and take a step back. He had a risks. rough idea what he wanted. And it, yeah, and it seemed like here's a quarter million, build me an app was yeah. like, okay, this is great to have the money, but like, what are we really building? 
and we weren't even confident on what to build. Like he had a basic idea, mm -hmm. yeah. but it was going to be a huge project. There was going to have to be a lot of requirements, a lot of uh, rules and processes that had to be defined to support this new thing that he didn't know. You know, he just yeah. had an idea. Right. And even for us to wrap our arms around this project, we needed more information. And that fed into this as well, because we said, we can't even build this based on what we know today. We need to talk to people, go figure. Right, right. And I think that was part of the, the, the momentum to say, let's, let's do some research, let's do some discovery right. work. Yeah, and, and, and basically it was just, let's find clarity about yeah. what this is we're doing. Because we wanted confidence because we had a, A, we had a bid. I mean, just to be realistic, the money, we weren't even sure how long it was going to take or what was going to be involved right. in this right. thing. Yeah. Um, so we were making up numbers. He didn't really know what he wanted. So he said, let's take some time and figure out exactly what you want, what your customers and potential customers want. Mm -hmm. And then we'll kind of come back together and talk about it. Like, I don't think our initial idea was to validate the project. It was more just to find out information yeah like almost like requirements basically what his customers really wanted mm -hmm. which would then help us define what the system needed to be able to support right and which would then also define what his capabilities are to deliver um or or help refine that um so it was it really was starting with that customer again, you know, and to his credit, he was running a pilot program, like a pseudo pilot program. There were people out there who had experience with this system, right? That we could get feedback from, which is who we talked to. We talked to a bunch of them and we found out they didn't like it very much. <laughs> like when we were going into it, trying to figure out like, all right, what's working? How can we refine it? Right. <laughs> and there were problems that they were talking about that were not even on his radar. Right. Of why they were unhappy with this. Again, they liked the idea, but it was I had a lot of problems that would right. be very expensive to correct. They weren't going to be fixed by us building a piece of software. <laughs> looking, looking where we are now with the kind of work we do, it would have been an uh, an excellent project to apply a full service design. Yeah. To somewhere, I still have the screenshot of the uh, Excel spreadsheet he was using to track all of his orders and in inventory manually. Mm -hmm. It's so ugly uh, and confusing. I mean, so the next phase in between was we talked to a bunch of customers, I think 12 or a dozen or so got positive feedback on the idea, but negative feedback on the execution. I talked to him and said, listen, this is, you got bigger problems than a piece of software. It's not going to solve what's wrong. Mm -hmm. And he decided to shut things down. Right. And we, we were basically said, this is a good idea, but there's so much you have to do. It's going to require more than $250,000. And, and this app should be built at some point. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Plus the app. <laughs> right. Because that's still a good idea to help him run the business. He came back with, as we suffered through mistake after mistake, our goodwill with clients is eroding and our orders are shrinking. I want to tell you how much I really appreciate your efforts, time, and ideas toward this concept. Again, thanks for your input. You truly helped me bring clarity to my decision. Like, and and he was really grateful that we came to this conclusion because we did it early, and right. clarity, and we talked about confidence, and he was able to know what he was up against confidently and realistically and make a good business decision. Some may argue that it would have been a really good business decision for us to take his quarter million and start building the app, but it wasn't a good decision for his business. The budget for our discovery project was 20 K something like that. Something like that. Um, so he spent 20 K to avoid spending 250 K, but really probably a couple million million over the course of a couple of years to, to get this business up and going. And, you know, that goes back to something else we were talking about, maybe on another show, is how do you measure success of your business? Is it building something or is it building the right thing? Right, right. And we like to build the right thing or work on the right thing, not just build something and bill for it. And I think that was a good example where we could have, like you said, taken his money, built some app, but right. it wouldn't have solved his yeah. problem. It wouldn't have, it would have helped us just from getting revenue, but we wouldn't have been able to point to it and say, oh, it solved the problem for our client. So 
right in the long and run certainly it wouldn't, have wouldn't have been yeah and we would have still been working on it and trying to to make something of it and maybe taking more of his money and, and eroding the relationship we had established with him and right and the stress on us and the business and having right. to juggle this and make excuses why we're, we're not doing what we thought we could do in that yeah. amount of time for that amount of money so i think it was the ethical and just the the, the smart thing to do from any business strand standpoint from a client relationship standpoint as well because he came back to us six months later with another idea <laughs> for another business and hired us to do something it was, it was a smaller project well, well that no that was um because he decided to refocus on his core business oh so it's a shift uh a, yeah a pivot, if you will. got it yeah, yeah yeah and and i think that's the other thing that that we helped him with is like okay so this this idea you have it's a neat idea it just may now may not be the time and so instead of investing all that time energy and money into this new idea he reinvested that into his core business felt better about what he was delivering to his core customers so right but to us when he came back with another project it validated that we had done the right thing right yeah him. exactly right and there were no Ill, Ill will or, you know, hard feelings or anything like that. It was, he thanked us. He said, hey, I've got more work. I trust you guys to, you know, be straight with me. And we will be. And we're always straight and always. honest because <sighs> why not? It isn't always fun, but right. I mean, but he, yeah, I think he, wasn't, he wasn't like, woohoo, you're shutting down my idea. Right. But he was, okay, I, I recognize that now is not the time and maybe never, but but at the very least I know for sure. I, but I think the lesson for us from that project was as we've taken those lessons, what we've learned and taken it to other projects we've done since discovery mm -hmm. work, especially is, you know, how, how to communicate to clients or prospective clients. Like this is the value of this work. You know, you take a small bite up front and you spend some money so you can understand, so you can get that confidence. So you know what you're building is the right thing versus taking whatever little amount you put into discovery and just saying, Forget it. I just want to put it into R and D or right. the D. Really, the development. <laughs> Forget the R. We're done with yeah, the R. <laughs> Forget the R. Just well, focus on a lot about this. There's enough R for me. Because <laughs> we, we, how many times do we hear from clients? Oh, we don't have money for research for discovery because we're building. And right. it goes back to, well, what are you building? Is it the right. right thing? We don't have time because we're shipping. Like, what right. are you shipping? Right. Well, right. I'm solving my problem. Yeah. Classic. Yeah, so it's it's really understanding, helping a business understand how they want to allocate their money and where they want to prioritize. And is it on strategy or is it on execution? And a lot of them come to me with, well, we have a strategy. We know we want this app, <laughs> as an example, right. or we want this thing. And I, it, it's sometimes a little hard to, to communicate, to get them to break the aura that they have, <laughs> the feeling they have, like, I know what I've got and I know what I want to like, really get them to question that. Like, how do you know? And let's talk to some actual people. Um, and sometimes they have, and that's great. But a lot of times they have not. Yeah. The idea has become precious to them. Yes. And as opposed and, to their customers being precious to them. And, and they're always worried about time. Like, oh, we've got this idea. Now we got to get to market. And to them... Because what again, what I hear is, well, we're going to build this thing in four months. We don't have time for research. But what we know is four months never is, is realistic. They say four months, it's a year. Right. So then when you go back after that end of that year and you say, well, you know, if you had taken two or three weeks at the very beginning, <laughs> right. you'd be in a you better place right now. Thing. Right. Instead, you spend now a whole year building the wrong thing because at the time you thought you didn't have the time. It's frustrating to see it happen because I've seen it happen with clients that did not want to do the discovery work and they just wanted to dive in. We, you and I have been brought into projects where they didn't want to do it and we've done other usability testing or other yeah. kind yeah. of end of cycle research. And unfortunately, I've had to tell them, well, this isn't working really well. <laughs> yeah. And, and in fact, it's working terribly. Yes. Uh, I was trying to be nice here. <laughs> right. Well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, realistically, it's you look at it and it's like you, the client have done a lot of work on this. Yeah. This looks very nice. The people who are your customers don't like it and are having a lot of trouble using it. And what I've learned is, or seen, it's a hard lesson for businesses to learn. Ones that go through it once and fail 
are much more open to it in the future because I've worked with some clients that have had to go through that pain. And the next time or the next project or, you know, whenever they engage with me, it's, oh yeah, we've had this problem in the past. This is where we failed. How can we do it better this time? And when I explain this approach, they're like, oh, of course. Like, why wouldn't we want to do that? And why didn't we do it last time? Unless they've gone through that heartache and that pain for, you know, investing a year of time, money, people, a lot of, a lot of businesses don't just don't see it. Like you said, they're kind of blinded by their confidence and mm-hmm. their ideas. Or, or false confidence, really. Right. False, it's, yeah. it's, we have a really good guess, or we think we have a really good guess. And we're taking that to mean it's a good idea. Right. And, and sometimes it is, you know, we have to, we have to give credit for that. But uh, I would say most times it's not, or at least and I'm, could be refined. I'm wondering how much of that is this whole mentality that's merged over the past, what is it now, four or five years of just build it and go and don't worry about breaking things or break early and often and we'll redo right. it. You know, the kind of Silicon Valley, lean UX, lean startup stuff. I think people are kind of latching onto that without understanding the risks involved. If you're VC funded and you've right. got a billion dollars, yeah, sure, maybe and, that's the way to and go. the attitude of, oh, if this doesn't work, we'll just pivot. Yeah. Instead of like, could we take one week and right. $25,000 and just investigate right yes we can do that we have time for that so, two weeks would be better but you know right. <laughs> but probably no more than two weeks you know I it mean, usually doesn't take longer than two weeks unless you're finding really bad things right right and, right and then that should open up everyone's eyes and say okay our hypothesis maybe needs to be refined let's spend a little more time right and really nail this down right which again goes back to why I always try and make these projects very iterative. Like, yeah. let's do this and we'll see. And then we'll be, we'll go this way, we'll go that way, or we'll go whichever way it says. And, and that right. there's your, there's your pivot. Sorry. Yeah. For a quick and dirty discovery project, you don't need more than a week or two. Yeah. To at least get started, to get your first round and get a, a sniff right. of in the right direction or not. To either, either validate the general idea, but then say, okay, there's some ways we can improve this, but we have to do a little more digging or to say this idea is not a good idea at all. Mm-hmm. And during the course of our conversations, these other three things came up. Let's investigate those. I mean, that brings up a, a point of a project that I was recently on where it didn't end in, in shutting someone's idea down and destroying <laughs> their dreams where you know, a client brought me in, <clears throat> excuse me, to basically do some, they were, they were launching an internal app and they were like, we, we know this isn't as good as it should be. Can you just make it better? The initial engagement with them was, was a little bit of usability testing. During the course of the testing, talking with the people who are actually going to be using this, it became clear that there were a lot of internal process inefficiencies. And so I suggested doing a discovery project after that, after the, the usability testing project was over, basically did like a low fidelity, I guess in the sense that our deliverables were low fidelity um, on purpose because we were wanting to move pretty quickly. Understanding of, of the service they were providing. It was a serve. I, I hesitate to call it like a true service design project, but we used, um, we were looking at their process at the services they were providing to their customers. And it just became really clear that the entire way they were structuring all the work that they were doing was super linear. And that was creating these wild inefficiencies. I think it was maybe eight business days of discovery work led then to proposals to how they could improve their internal process and as well as some design mock-ups to sort of not, not in the sense of like, here's your design, you know, go build it, but just to communicate the intent of, of how the changes, how to be less linear in their work. And ultimately when they launched with this, they were going from a, an old internal app to this new internal app. And they were hoping to get like a a 10% increase in efficiency and reduction of errors and things like that. And it ended up being a a 30% 
increase, mm-hmm. which for them is a direct impact to their bottom line. Maybe not direct, direct, but basically the more work they can do, the more money they can make. Um, and they were, they're a $30 million revenue company. So a 30% increase, and this is, you know, napkin math at best, but made them a lot more money per year by saying, okay, you know, here's some problems that the users are running into with this design, but let's take a step back and really figure out what's going on here. Mm -hmm. You know, and so that's eight, 10 days of work to make them maybe $10 million in revenue extra a year. Yeah. Amazing. How how is that pays for itself, right? Right, right. I mean, that's certainly not the outcome that everybody gets. You know, everybody gets gets 10 million, you get 10 million. But the opportunities are there. Right, right. And and the 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 investment on the scale that a lot of these companies are looking at, it's so small to get that extra, extra bit of confidence. To build the right thing. Build the right thing, people. That's all we want. That's all we want. And then make that right thing better over time. Right. Done and done. It's so easy. Yep. <laughs> buy, Everyone out there, go do that. Buy my two-page book on the pro- on that. Subscribe <laughs> <laughs> to our newsletter. I feel like this isn't interesting to people, but it's very interesting to me, is that this just reduces so much waste in time and money. Yep. Focus you on the right thing. Do the right work well. It isn't simple work, but... It's a very simple approach that leads to good outcome. This is this is why I, I if I have even have an inkling that my client is not quite sure exactly what they want, or I don't understand what they're trying to achieve, really recommend doing a week, four days, you know, depending on my level of lack of confidence or their level of lack of confidence, mm-hmm. something to really get an understanding of what we're supposed to be doing together. That's that's my pitch. I yeah, I'm with you. I think that's a good. I don't wording. think you always have to do them, but I think you mostly always have to do them. Mostly, almost always. Kind mostly, of. almost always, except for that one time. Good game, everybody. Thanks for watching. Good game. good game, and go do discovery. Go discover discovery. That's right, and not the discovery that you you may read about. That's hey, you've already determined what's going to happen, and now you have to do discovery on how. To make it happen. I mean, not there's anything exactly wrong with that, but we're really focusing on that, the what and the why. The, the way, way, way up front. Way up front. Way up front. Yep. De- determining what work to do versus yep. determining what am I going to need to execute on this idea that's been handed to me. I just, uh, I, I've, I've seen other, other people write about discovery or talk about discovery, and, and there's a lot of focus on the so you've been given an idea. <laughs> now you've got to do this. And I'm like, all right. I mean, I get it. In a it. way. Yeah, in a way. Definitely get it. But I, I think there's so much value in doing this kind of work way up front. Vetting ideas. Basically, you know, for, for the, the VC funded folks out there, it's, it's the due diligence stuff. But it's, it, it's a bit of a deeper dive than just the gut of someone saying, yeah, that sounds like a good idea. Here's some money, roll with it. Right. Ideally, you're starting with a problem to solve, not the solution. I know I just took our ending and then added a bunch of other stuff on. But well, you can fix that in post. So. Fix it in post. Yeah. We're wearing the same clothes, so you can swap. <laughs> yeah. All of a sudden, we're wearing tuxedos for like three seconds. <laughs> the shadows are all different. <laughs> it's like raining outside all of a sudden. <laughs> That's right. We, we understand continuity here at We Can Do Better. All right. Thanks. That's it for this episode, I think. We're going to wrap it there. See you next time. Hey, goodbye, everybody. <laughs> I got nothing. I'll just cut it when you, when you said that.